very, very warm welcome to you all. Um, I'm Jane Hatton and I run Evenwake and we've arranged a conference here today. EY have very, very kindly sponsored the event and we work with EY very closely and they really are one of the organisations that are looking at equality and diversity and inclusion in a genuine way and really doing the right things for the right reasons and a lot of them and we'll be hearing more about those in a moment so thanks to EY. My hope for today is that all of you will go away with some ideas about how to remove barriers that might be in your recruitment processes or how to do positive action to actually go out there and really attract the talent that might not know that you're keen to um, attract them and to employ them. I don't see recruiting um, people with long-term health and disability conditions as being part of our corporate and social responsibility program actually. I, I can hear my UK chairman Steve Varley's voice in my ear saying, where's the profit here? Where's the profit? And my goodness, there is significant profit in this space for us. Okay, So I kind of do see it as a hard-nosed business decision that if EY can get better at recruiting, developing, retaining people with disabilities, we are going to beat our competitors. So the first thing we need to consider is how do we encourage candidates to disclose um, disability? And the simple answer to that is to create an environment which is safe for them um, to feel that they can uh, comfortably progress and be accepted into your organisation. So for example, in a thousand disabled students and graduates who were recently interviewed, 76% of them were uncomfortable about disclosing their disability because they felt they would be discriminated against. So a really key takeaway is to have a look at your positioning, have a look at your wording, have a look at your branding and making sure all of those are encouraging for the disabled population. The new Director General, Tony Hall, um, announced that the future of the BBC is a digital one. And he uses the phrase, a place for everyone, uh, where everyone belongs. And for us, that's the, that's the real business driver for us to have an inclusive and diverse, diverse workforce. We're funded by the public, we're funded by the licensed fee payer, and we need to be reflecting our audience. So we produce content and services that they can that, that they can use and, and reflect and, and see themselves in. The summary here are just some of the steps and they look simple but it takes it's taken us about four years to do some of this. So it's not a quick or easy win and I listen to Toby and I go, oh I want to do that too. And oh 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 no um, on the to-do list. So it is an ongoing process and it's not a quick process. If we've learned one thing, um, it's that this concept of becoming disability confident is really useful. The question for senior players isn't, why don't you recruit more people that you don't think you've ever met, that you suspect can't do the job, and you don't know where they are. The first question is, why don't you qualify as a disability confident company? EY actually used this language of, do we qualify as a disability confident company? You think about how many students that have disabilities, graduates, the people you say that you want to attract, uh, may have had some disability that stopped them from getting good A-levels, but have gone on to get a really good degree. I would say that the experience they've had as a graduate getting that degree, handling a disability, handling their own uh, budgets, handling their support workers, would actually make them a far stronger candidate for you as employers than somebody who hadn't, for example. You know what you're doing, but you don't know what you're not doing. So coming to an event like this is hopefully, and it has so far this morning, giving uh, a lot of food for thought about all of the things that we're not doing, all the things we're not even considering. The business case, or indeed the, the case for employing people who are disabled is exactly the same as it is for employing anybody. Uh, we're looking for bright, highly motivated people who themselves are looking for a successful and uh, medium or long-term career at EY. It's seeing disabled people as people. We're not talking about a separate group of people that need a specialist uh, way of being treated. It's about, it's about adapting 
your business and your organisation. So actually you can get the best out of everyone's talents 